안녕하십니까? Nicolas Imida and today I have for you a super fresh straight out of the oven new web API that is incredibly cool. When we use mobile applications either iOS or Android and we move between screens we are used to seeing animations happen. Maybe one element is animated, maybe the new screen fades in, maybe it shows from the bottom or slides from the side. Creating animations like this for our website is not impossible but it is no walk in the park either. You would have to maybe detect when the user clicks on the link and then you will have to render and start animating the next page while still showing the old page and when the animation finishes then you will remove the old page. Not impossible but it sounds like a lot of work. Enter the view transitions API. With the View Transitions API, we can add beautiful transitions between pages to our website by only using HTML code. Let me show you. Here we have two simple HTML pages. On the index page, we have a link to the doc HTML page. And on the doc HTML page, there is an image and a title. With the code as it is, when I click on the link, there will be no transition. To get the transition, all we have to do is add a meta tag with the name view transition to the head of both of our pages. And now when we click on the link, we will automatically get a fade in transition when we navigate. That is already super cool. But if we want to, we can customize the animations between pages using CSS. Before we do that, we have to understand how this API works. When the API is enabled and we click on a link, the browser will take a screenshot of the old page, it will capture a live representation of the new page and animate the change between them. On our CSS, we get access to both of these elements, the old screenshot and the new page. If you want to customize the animation when the old page is disappearing, you can use the view transition old pseudo element. And if you want to customize the animation when the new page appears, you can use the view transition new pseudo element. In our case, we're going to add this code, selecting those pseudo elements to both of our pages, which as you can see, makes the animation slower when we change between pages. But that is not all we can create our own animations. Like for example, making the old page slide to the left and making the new page slide from the right. For this, on the old page, we are going to create an animation that is going to change the opacity of the page to zero and move it to the left. And we're going to give that animation to the view transition old pseudo element. And then on the new page, we will make an animation that initializes the page with zero opacity and moves it to the right. And we are going to give that animation to the view transition new pseudo element. And as you can see, when we click on the link, we have a very nice animation that makes our web look like a native app. That is already super cool. But what if I told you that we can also animate elements between screens? For this, on our index page, we are going to put a small photo of a dog with a link to the dog page. And on the dog page, we will show the same photo, just a little bigger, plus some extra text. Again, here, only because we are using that magical meta tag, we get the nice fade animation. But now we're going to use CSS to tell the browser that we want to animate the image between the two screens. The way we do this is by using the view transition name CSS property to tell the browser that this image is the same across the screen. That is why we are naming the image dog in both our index HTML and doc.html. And as you can see, just with that line of code, now the browser will animate the image when the page changes. How cool was that? The View Transitions API also works with JavaScript, so you can use it from React or other framework. All you have to do is call document that start view transition and run whatever code your framework uses to navigate and you're good to go. Now it's time for some bad news. This API is still experimental and as of some days ago, the only browser that supports it fully is Google Chrome version 111 and Chrome for Android, which means that we have to wait for all the other browsers to adopt it. Microsoft Edge and Opera are on the way. It seems like Firefox will support it as well. And we will have to wait and see if Safari eventually does. That's it for this video. I hope that you found it useful. And don't forget that if you want to learn things like JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, among many others for absolutely free, 
All you have to do is click the link below to join any of our many free courses that you can take right now for free with me. Click on the link below and I will see you there. Onondo, kamsahago, sarunhago, dao mebayo. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.